In the first tutorial, we presented a brief overview of the Just War tradition. In this video, we're going to delve deeper into some of those ideas that were noted. Historically, the Just War tradition, which we can define as a set of mutually agreed and respected rules of justifying war and moral limits on waging war, tend to evolve between two culturally similar enemies. For the most part, that recognition accorded to each other has to be there for any sense of fairness or justice to exist. While warfare has a tendency to unleash the worst aspects of humanity, the theory in this tutorial is that when there is the recognition that the enemy is also a trading partner or who shares a similar historical background, a language or religion, or at least there is some recognition by the leaders that in war some semblance of civilization and civilized values must continue, then leaders and generals are apt to seek to restrain what would otherwise be whole scale murder. The brute lies within all of us, and we can all fall to unrelenting barbarity unless we seek to restrain our actions for a higher notion of self-interest or of civility or decency or basically values, however we may define those words. And the thrust of just war is to seek to keep elements of those values when war is unleashed. Moreover, the need for the mutual recognition of humanity is thus a critical idea for just war theory, both in its historical development and its current status as we find in international and military laws and conventions. When that recognition is there, we do witness the difficult endeavour of reaching for a higher morality, of ensuring that there are limits to what can be unleashed. When that recognition that we share something with the enemy is not there, the absence can help to explain why sometimes we observe horrendous wars of genocide, of barbaric acts against innocent people and of wanton aggression against neighbouring peoples. In a later tutorial, I shall delve deeper into a theory concerning that disposition in humanity. But when a field of values is shared, or has sufficient overlap between two warring parties, we often find that they implicitly, that is without written word, or explicitly, agree upon limits to that warfare, and how they seek to justify waging war in the first place. There can be an overarching understanding between fighting peoples that some things are just not done, that there are limits to certain kinds of warfare, or that there are sanctuaries for those who should not be attacked. But when enemies differ greatly in their values, because they believe that they have irreconcilable differences in politics, religion or purpose in life, or that they have such differences regarding their race or language, so that they believe the other people are less than human, then the war conventions are rarely applied. The excuse to wage war becomes minimal and limits to warfare, such as only targeting the military, are ignored. Such divisive, despotic and narcissistic beliefs, the belief that we and our ways are better than anyone else's and so others are lesser, morally and politically speaking, pervade the history of many societies around the world and have shaped world history in all its corners through violence and tragedy. Much of human history since the dawn of the agricultural revolution has been bloody and the terrorising heartless barbarian has cut down the lives of untold numbers every century. Yet everywhere too there is evidence of the desire to restrain the wild men and sometimes women too to hold them back from waging war in the first place and to restrain them in war and to respect the terms of peace and the sanctuaries within communities. That, we shall be arguing, comes from a higher sense of morality, indeed from a, a way of being in the world, something much higher than, say, allowing uninhibited violence against any people, their building, their sanctuaries and their ability to live. Just War Theory and its application is, in a nutshell then, a rejection of the philosophy of moral nihilism. Moral nihilism is the notion that there are no such things as morals, and hence anything worth living for, defending, or even respecting. In rejecting nihilism, 
Just Rule Theory seeks to remind us all of the civility, reason, humanity, and even the spirit and love, all the higher senses of being that motivates a desire to restrict the evil, the hateful, the scornful, the craving, the vindictive, the despising, the punitive and the fearful, who all project their fears and their base desires and anger onto others and seek their destruction as some kind of recompense for their own weakness, their vanity, their self-hatred or inflated pride and arrogance. The virtue of humility, mercy and love are far from such people who, when they pick up arms, require training in the codes of conduct, which also invoke the demand that they are accountable for their actions both within and after war. As an analogy, the application of just war theory is thus like schooling and education. They both seek to raise human consciousness above the selfish, proud, revengeful, hating ego that many struggle with, and to help stretch their moral circle beyond the garden wall to neighbours far away. Naturally, religion and spiritual thinking has recommended restraining wanton and destructive tendencies in the name of something higher. Humanism, when it rejects religion, similarly seeks to educate us to respect the innate dignity or rights of our fellow humans. In part, we can recognise that the motivation for forming or agreeing to certain conventions is mutually beneficial. Both sides may look upon a certain range of actions as undermining the potential for good relations after the war, or which have become too embedded in their cultures to be acceptable, such as the destruction of temples or wanton attacks on civilians and their farms. There is also an implicit recognition that the deployment of any underhand tactics or weaponry can provoke an indefinite series of vengeance acts which may have proved to be detrimental to the political and moral interests to both sides in the past. And so a belief emerges that violations of the historical conventions creates more problems than it's worth. Nonetheless, beyond these simplistic self-interested tactics that aim to avoid intensifying the cost of war to each other, there exists an age-old proposition that we can all relate to a recognition of being human. When we encounter a stranger on a walk, we seek to form a bond by greeting them and recognising their humanity. When war ends, and in the peaceful intermissions that occur, that mutual recognition is never far from most people. A handshake, a shared cigarette or food, a game, a joke. Our moral self tends to reassert itself when the firing stops or in the temporary lulls between conflict when an injured person needs our attention regardless of the badge on their arm. The guide within Just War Theory is to ensure that our connection with the other, the enemy, as being just like ourselves, is never obliterated. So, Just War Theorists generally propose that any lack of rules to war should be denounced, rejected, and that the conventions of war should apply to all equally. That is, Just War Theory should be universal, and similar to what we now describe as human rights and its corollaries of dignity and respect that all people deserve. We could retort that such a demand is idealistic. After all, the reality of the history of human relations, international relations, is not one that presents much evidence of rationality, never mind a commitment to dignity or encouraging universal love and peace on earth. In other words, some folk will just not understand the reasons for maintaining a restraint on aggression and destruction. Now, regardless whether they do or not, the idealism of expanding the just war conventions of ethics to all of humanity is not wrong. It reminds us to reach higher, to seek a better way of being in the world. And it's my contention that the just war tradition and the corresponding legal and military codes seek to encourage warriors to uphold the honour and the sense of dignity and the moral conventions that may be found in their profession, as well as reminding politicians and citizens to sustain some form of humanity during the great evils of warfare. Now, in the next tutorial, we'll review the history of Just War Theory, which presents a context for where we are today. Thank you for listening, and I look forward to reading any comments you may be able to leave behind. Thank you.